Welcome to the Christian Church on this first day of the week, July the 3rd, 2016. I thank God for another opportunity to come before you. Today we will not be preaching a traditional sermon that you may hear around this time, around the 4th of July, where they celebrate uh, the Declaration of Independence and all those things. I've come to celebrate the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've come to celebrate the goodness of the Lord Jehovah God who gave his only begotten son that through him we may be saved, purified, sanctified, justified, and glorified when he gives us our glorified bodies in eternity based on our faithfulness to serving God without wavering. We've been in a series dealing with tearing down false doctrines. We've torn down the doctrine of once saved, always saved with the truth of scripture. We've torn down the Pentecostal uh, misteachings where people have taken scriptures and said, well, the only evidence of the Holy Ghost is someone speaking in tongues. We found out that Every believer has the Holy Ghost living on the inside of him, and God gives giftings according to his will, not according to ours. So the definition and the evidence of the Holy Spirit is someone operating in the fruit of the Spirit, in love and joy and peace and patience and long-suffering. You understand? And self-control and meekness and temperance and humility. People walking in true faith. We're going to be dealing with these things. The evidence of the Holy Ghost is a changed life. Then we started dealing with the false prosperity gospel movement that has swept through and deceived many people and causing people to run after covetousness, causing people to lust after the things of the world and saying God promised us all this stuff when he didn't. God promised us eternal life. He promised us the presence and power of his Holy Ghost living inside of us, but he didn't promise us material wealth. He did not. People have twisted scripture. We're going to be dealing with that again this week. We're going to deal with more of tearing down the prosperity gospel. This will be part two. And Lord willing, there may be a part three because the last element we're going to deal with in this prosperity movement, which also ties into the world of faith movement, is this tithing, this misteaching that New Testament believers are commanded to tithe a tenth of their gross income. This is a heresy. This is not taught by scripture. We see tithing in scripture, but the appearance of tithing in scripture is totally different from the way it's being taught today. And when you come under Jesus, Jesus redeemed you. But we'll get to that. Today we're going to start in Matthew chapter 6 and be in some other verses dealing with the fact that what the true gospel is all about and what Jesus told us to do. There are many more scriptures that I'll be covering here, but I'm going to cover some of the main scriptures that tie around this truth and we're going to look at some mistaught scripture in the midst. Let us pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Father, for allowing me to read and be a part of teaching your word. Lord Jehovah, you are God, and there is no other God like you, and there is no other God but you, Heavenly Father, and your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. You are the only triune God and sovereign God of the universe. There is no other God but you. I reject Allah. I reject all of the false idols and all of the vain idols that are being worshipped out here, including the false god of money or mammon that's being worshipped by many who are selling their souls for fame and for pleasure. Lord, purify me within and cleanse me from all of my iniquities in word, thought, and in deed, that I may preach your holy word with a clean and pure heart on the inside, that I may minister to those here and those that may listen to this sermon over the, over the Internet, 
I pray that you may help me to minister truth through the Holy Ghost and still your anointing in me, Lord, that I may speak what pleases you and how we may address these issues of taking apart these false doctrines that are plaguing many believers who are trusting the people that are teaching them, who, are, who have turned to teaching things that are contrary to your truth and twisting your scripture. We want the truth of your scripture to be clarified and verified. May your spirit empower me to preach beyond my human capabilities and that I may teach your word with rightly dividing your, your word with wisdom and understanding, knowledge and revelation that you give of your truth to my heart and purify my heart that I may not preach your word in vain or teach your word in vain but that I may bring forth a fruitful reward and a harvest in the kingdom of God, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Lord, thank you for the opportunity you've given me to teach your word. And I pray that I do not do it in falsehood or with a sense of ungodly pride or arrogance, but to teach your word with honesty with conviction and with the true confidence of knowing that you have given me true revelation of your word. Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 19, is where we're going to start today. It says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt. And where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, nor where thieves and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Jesus starts out with a powerful powerful piece of scripture it goes completely against what's being taught in the churches today where people are seeking after health and wealth and material things mm -hmm. and not seeking after holiness righteousness and sanctification and peace and love you understand they're seeking after money fame fortune notoriety and respect they want to be recognized mm -hmm. by the public, so they sell out. You got sports stars that claim to be Christians, but have sold out for fame and fortune. You have movie stars, some claim to be Christians, but have sold out for fame and fortune. Mm -hmm. You have musical artists, both in the secular and in the so-called gospel scene that have sold out for fame and fortune. I'm not speaking for every single athlete and every single actor and every single artist, but a vast, vast majority of them have sold their souls even to produce gospel music. How sad. How sad that the hymns and the things that were written, written in the blood, sweat, and tears. People who suffer. See, this is different from the blood, sweat, and tears that LeBron James poured out and winning a championship for Cleveland. A sports franchise, a city which has been reported to be very racist. By the way, you couldn't tell when they won that NBA title, but that's only because of glory and notoriety and all of those things. But I assure you, it's gone back to being what it's been, a city full of segregation and division like many cities in this country. 
where many people have been set up to fail and have to live in ghettos and places where gangs rule and drug lords rule. Do you understand? They have to live in circumstances where they're forced to give up their virginity, where they're forced to commit crimes, where they're beat up and sexed into gangs, where they're told that if you don't do what I tell you to do, we'll take your life from you. There are people who've been forced to perform things that normally they would not have done. God sees it all. God says he's coming back to avenge and judge this world of godlessness. All those people who were controlled and forced into sin. There's going to be a payday coming. Jesus said lay up. For your, not for yourselves, treasures upon earth. Many of the gangs and many of the drug dealers and different things are laying up treasures at the expense of people out here, which are getting addicted to their drugs, which are getting addicted to their pornography, which is getting addicted to their music which is getting addicted to their movies, which is giving, getting addicted to their sports. And so much money is being extracted from the poor and the needy. You understand? Instead of them feeding the poor and the needy, they do things for charities for tax write-off purposes so they don't have to pay as many taxes. It's not always because of the kindness of someone's heart. Many of these... Um, basketball stars that are being put up on pedestals are some of the most arrogant, nasty people that you ever want to meet. And yet, they champion themselves as being people that are out here for the ordinary people of this world. When in fact, these people are proud of the fact that they're making all this money they have tattoos all over their bodies. They have all these different things that they're making money from. So you got people tattooing themselves in rebellion against God's word because their favorite sports athlete has tattoos on their body. I assure you Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 10 has not changed. Where the Bible says, you shall not make any cuttings in your flesh, nor print marks upon your arm. I am the Lord. Yes, it was given in the law. But guess what? All those things that associate with things like idolatry, they still stand. Because the Bible forbids idolatry from being practiced in God's people, whether it's the Christians of the New Testament or the people of Israel that followed the law of Moses in the Old Testament. God forbids idolatry and the prosperity gospel takes you right into covetousness which the Bible says is idolatry. Jesus said, moth and rust doth corrupt the treasures of this earth. This is true. This is why rich folks put moth bowls in their suits to try to keep insects from eating them like moths. See, the Bible is so true. It's so true. The rust of the treasures that are being hit up and stored up shall eat their flesh and burn as it and burn it as, as fire, says the New Testament. James told us these people have heaped up treasures for themselves in the last days. God's gonna deal with it. Let's see what Jesus said. He said, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. Listen to verse 24. No man can serve two masters. 
For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, or what, or yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than me, and the body than remnant? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in the barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Hmm? Who can get taller just because they wish they were taller? No one. And why take ye thought? For remnant, which is clothing, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. The flowers are even prettier than the beauty of King Solomon. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? God bless you. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or what withal shall we be clothed? Verse 32, open parentheses, For all these things do the Gentiles seek, close parentheses. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. God knows what you need. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Do you see what it says? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. But no, they want to seek prosperity. They want to seek material things. And there are many that have been deceived and are falling after charismatic figures that have the ability to woo a crowd with their false teachings and twisted scriptures simply because they look good, they sound good. You look around and see their large mega church. You see all the, the gold and the jewels and all the things and all the people following and all the money they give to these ministries and you think this is what it's all about. Oh, no, it's not. God's going to pay them one day. The God that gave his son, Jesus Christ, did not give his son so that we can go and run after all this stuff. He did not. He told us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's the only gospel. That's the only gospel. God will take care of what you need, whether you have a little or you have a lot. You need to thank God for what you have, and you need to be a good steward because the much is given, much is required. So many of these people with these secret offshore bank accounts and different things where they're hiding millions and millions of dollars from the government, God sees it all. God sees it all. They can't just preach the gospel and not charge people for the gospel. They say, oh, those that preach the gospel should live of the gospel. They're twisting that scripture. That's not telling you to go out and rip people off and manipulate them. If somebody wants to give to a ministry, it's their free will choice. They're not obligated by God or anybody else. It's your free will to give or not to give. Jesus said we're going to take care of the poor, the hungry, the naked. Those are the ones we need to take care of, and many of these ministries are not doing that. They may give some money just to look good, but you have no idea how much money is not being, is not even going to needy families. See, God sees it all, and he's keeping record. Let's look at some scriptures that have been twisted. 
Let's go in the Old Testament. Because this is in Joshua. The book of Joshua, which is right after Deuteronomy. It's the sixth book in our Bible. And see, many people have twisted Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Many have done so. You know? God is not pleased when people pervert his holy word. His word has come that we may have eternal life, that we may see God's journey, you know, the journey he shows us, taking us from the time man fell in the garden to the time he redeemed us through Jesus and how we should live in the New Testament to his rapture and then the great tribulation and then his second coming and then the millennial kingdom and then the devil being loose from the bottomless pit deceiving the nations one last time and then the army of the of the enemy encompassing the saints god sends fire from heaven to destroy the wicked and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and then we see the great white throne judgment where all of the wicked those who never accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Those that backslid and went apostate and lived a hypocritical life after hearing the truth will all get thrown in a lake of fire together and rewarded individually according to their works. Jesus said it will be even more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the, land, in the day of judgment than for this generation. Let's see what it says. We're going to start in verse 1. It says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Uh, now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all thy people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Did it say to the church? No. It said to the children of Israel. So this is Old Testament. This is what God is, is saying to Joshua to take his people over the Jordan River. This has nothing to do with people sitting in the church. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Once again, he said it unto Moses, not the church. From the wilderness in this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and under the great sea, toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. Notice it said the law, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, 
that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Do you understand that? You must keep the entire 613 commandments of the Old Testament and meditate on those 16, oh, 613 commandments day and night to make your way prosperous. We are not under the law, we are under grace. So those who use Joshua chapter 1 to support their prosperity heresy are doing so to their own destruction if they don't repent. And there are many churches that are acting like this. Go in and possess the land. You ain't even got folks, uh, recording artists, making songs going in to take the land. Are you willing to go out and live in the wilderness? Are you willing to go out and be chased by Pharaoh and his army? Are you willing to go out there and stretch your hands out and see if the Red Sea apart for you? No, God told Moses to do that. And God is the one that parted the Red Sea. He's not parting the Red Sea from some false apostle or evangelist coming down there stretching their hands out over the river. God is the one that gives us commands. They've taken that scripture totally out of context. As I read it, it explains to you what it's talking about. It's talking to the children of Israel, and it was talking about those that keep and meditate on the law of God. So why are people trying to meditate today? Now you got folks taking yoga that go to church. You got folks getting into Hinduism and all this evil stuff. Doing things that provoke devils to come wreak havoc in your life. Don't give the devil a foothold. The Bible says, neither give place to the devil, didn't it? Be angry and sit not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place unto the devil. People are giving the devil a foothold through their false teachings. Here's another Old Testament scripture that was twisted. Jeremiah chapter 29. And I've preached on this before in the past. But we need to revisit these scriptures because God has so much revelation and truth in this scripture. We're going to deal with it because we want to make sure that this false prosperity gospel is exposed and that it is destroyed. Because the people of God have no business following after false teachers and false doctrines you must stand give them the truth if they don't receive it the bible says they have a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away i have to leave your church either with or without your blessing because i cannot subject my family to false teaching anymore that's why the lord has given me the ability to teach my family the gospel not to try to hide myself away from other folk that believe because some have been invited. Many, have, you know, have just turned it down. You understand? But we must preach the gospel anyway. I'm not going to tear those people down. They have a choice to go over wherever they want and to go nowhere if they want. But I'm going to preach the truth of the gospel. And it's funny how the truth don't get a whole lot of people sitting in the aisles. A lot of folks are hearing false stuff. Let's see what Jeremiah has to say. Chapter, chapter 29 says, okay, let me get into Jeremiah chapter 29. We're going to start, let's see where we're going to start, a little bit in. Okay, it says in seek, we're going to start at around verse 7. Okay, or are we going to start in verse, let's start in verse 1, because I want people to see what it's talking about. Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders which were carried away captives 
and to the priests, and to the prophets, and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. This is to the people of the captivity. So we know who is talking to him in about verse 2. After this, oh, after that, Jeconiah the king and the queen and the eunuchs, the princes of Judah and Jerusalem and the carpenters and the smiths were departed from Jerusalem, close parentheses. Verse 3, by the hand of Elasa, Elasa, the son of Shaphan, Gemariah, the son of Hilkiah, open parentheses, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent unto Babylon, to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, close parentheses, saying, verse 4, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, see, he's talking to the captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon, build ye houses, dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives, and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands. Okay? Notice it says to husbands. That promotes marriage. That may bear sons, daughters, that ye may be increased there and not diminished. And it not only promotes marriage, it promotes marriage between a man and a woman. I need to emphasize that in today's society. And seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which ye cause to be dreamed. Don't even listen to your dreams. You got a lot of folks out here following after dreams and visions. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. Verse 10, for thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and causing you to return to this place. Check this out, verse 11. This is the reason for this verse, not for the false prosperity movement of the day. God said, I will come back and perform my good word after these 70 years of captivity. Of captivity. Verse 11. For I know the thoughts. Mm, mm, mm. We got an issue right there. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me. And I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. This is written to the captives. It is not written to Joel Osteen and his church or any of these false prosperity teachers. There is a ton of them out here preaching a false gospel. This is written to the captives. God didn't say, I know the plans I have, like these false Bible translations say. The King James says, but version of the Bible says, for I know the thoughts I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace. Didn't say plans to prosper you. It said thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. They say a hope in the future. 
See, they totally twist and change Jeremiah 29 and 11 and take it out of context. And this happens a lot. People take scripture out of context and come up with their own meaning for it and deceive the masses into believing lies. But if you read the Bible and ask God for his understanding, to give you his understanding, that he gives to all that liberally ask. You understand? He gives it liberally. He says, James, if any man like wisdom, let him ask of God. God gives us the wisdom. God gives us the knowledge and understanding. I want to touch on one more scripture before I get out of here. I can't shorten this because it's so important that you know the truth. Matthew chapter 19 is where we're going. And it is the account in the middle of it, of the chapter, about the rich young ruler that came to Jesus. Like I said, there are many more scriptures that can be used, but this gives you enough of a foundation to completely obliterate the false prosperity gospel being taught. You don't want to run after idolatry. Let's see what the rich young ruler. Verse 16, and behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? This guy was arrogant. Verse 17, and he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Verse 18, he saith unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Verse 19, Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 20, The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? This guy was arrogant. He was testing Jesus. The Bible says, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He was actually tempting Jesus. Because he wanted Jesus to search his life, and he thought Jesus wasn't going to find any flaw in this man's life. Well, let's see what Jesus said. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast. Thou that thou, I mean, go sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. Then he said, Lay not for yourself treasure on earth, but lay, lay it up in heaven. Yeah. Jesus said, Lay up treasures in heaven. For where your treasure is, that's where your heart should be also. So if my treasure's in heaven, then my heart's going to be on God because God is the only way to heaven through Jesus Christ, his son. But when the young man heard that saying, check this, he went away shameful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto the disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceeding amazed saying, who then can be saved? Jesus, but Jesus beheld them, and said unto them with men, this is impossible. But with God all things are possible. Then answered Peter and said unto him, behold, we have forsaken all, and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? Verse 28, and Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, 
judging the 12 tribes of Israel, verse 29, ancestors, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, this is verse 30, and the last shall be first. Let me just break this down with the help of the Lord. He said in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on his throne. He didn't say today, we can have it now. See how people twist scripture, start ministries, and deceive people who don't read the Bible to try to know what the Bible is saying? Jesus said in the regeneration, and he's not telling us to forsake our families. He's saying those that have forsaken family. See, in some places, when a person gets born again, the whole family turns against them. Their spouse may turn against them. Their brothers and sisters may turn against them. Their children may turn against them. They had to flee for their life. You understand? And you got false religions like the Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons. When you become a Christian, a real Christian, they will forsake you. They will turn their back on you. So you have no choice but to forsake them. Because they already excommunicated you from their presence. Because you have turned away from their false beliefs. Jesus said they shall receive these blessings. It's not telling us to give up our families. But Jesus said if we love our families more than we love him, we cannot be his disciple. So my love for my wife cannot exceed my love for the Lord. My love for God must be greater than any love of any human being or any material thing or anything on this planet. You understand? Including my own life. I must love God more than I love the fact that I'm a breathing, existing human being. Existing by his grace and mercy. I must love God more than anything. That's why we sing a song called More Than Anything. I love you, Jesus, more than anything. You understand? We sing because we love Jesus. We worship because we love Jesus. And most important, we obey the word of God. We don't allow ourselves to anymore get in track with false teaching. That's why I'm teaching my family with the grace of God. I must not continue to put my family in the hands of some pastor who just may be a false prophet teaching false doctrine. Can't keep taking those chances. Got to teach it the way it's supposed to be taught because their blood is on my hands if I do not. I thank you for listening to me today. I hope that the false prosperity gospel has been completely stripped of its power to deceive those that hear this teaching. Search it out for yourself. Get into scripture. Find out what the scripture is saying. I broke it down here. But it's even more powerful when you get in the presence of the Lord and read the word and the Holy Ghost reveals it to you. you know I'm, you'll know I'm telling the truth when the Spirit reveals the truth. Not simply because I said it's true. God's word is greater than my word. You understand? I want to be in line with God. My words must be honest and pure before a holy God because it is his word that exceeds my thoughts and opinions about what an interpretation of scripture ought to be and ought not to be. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for loving me and gracing me with the opportunity to preach and teach your holy word. I pray that those that are here and those that may hear this sermon on the internet may hear what your spirit is doing in my life. The truth of the word of God must be shared. And I just pray that many will be 
turn towards you to seek your, the true and living God, the true light, the light above all lights, that they will not fall into the deceptions of false teaching anymore. I pray your spirit will empower me to continue to preach and teach and live according to the truth of the gospel. I pray that those that hear and believe the truth will share that truth with others so that the truth may grow and so that many hearts will be turned towards you and turned away from the false teachings and the materialism that is plaguing the believers and plaguing the church because of false prophets that are teaching false doctrines. I ask that you may bind every demonic spirit that has attacked the church. I pray that you may bind every devil that is deceiving people into idolatry. I pray that the truth of your word will not go upon deaf ears and blind eyes, but that people will see and hear what the spirit is saying unto the church and unto the churches and that their hearts may understand that they may be converted and be healed I ask for your power and mercy to be manifest in the lives of those who are willing to serve you and trust you I ask in Jesus name that you may give us mercy and protection keep us safe and watch over us I ask in Jesus wonderful name Amen God bless you you are dismissed go in this grace and praise the Lord, hallelujah.